Hi, I'm Tim McHenry, an orthopedic surgeon here at Prisma Health, to talk to you about shared decision making for prescription opioids after orthopedic surgery. Pain varies with the type of surgery. Most people will have mild pain that is not functionally limiting by about 10 days after surgery. Larger procedures such as total joint replacement and spine surgery will require more pain control than smaller minor surgeries such as carpal tunnel surgery. You can see here that the degree of pain will vary with the size of the surgical procedure. Pain due to surgery usually significantly improves after about 10 days or at least by two to three weeks. This graph shows that the typical patient's pain after total knee replacement is mild after two or three weeks. Effective post-operative pain control begins before surgery, and many major medical centers in the United States have adapted enhanced recovery after surgery protocols to improve recovery after surgery. There's a pain management component to these protocols that includes preoperative loading with medications such as prescription strength anti-inflammatory pain medications, extra strength Tylenol, pain medications for nerve pain, and anxiety medications. We try to minimize the administration of opioids during surgery to avoid sensitizing your system to require more opioids for pain control and we continue these treatments post-surgically to minimize your pain. Effective post-surgical pain control requires multiple modalities and a combination of these different treatments is more effective than using opioid pain medications alone. The first is early mobilization by physical therapy which helps to decrease pain. Local treatment with cryotherapy, often with ice packs for about 20 minutes, can also be effective. Non-opioid medications, such as anti-inflammatory pain medications and Tylenol, especially in combination, can be very effective. And we use opioid medications for what we call breakthrough pain, pain that is not controlled well by the first three options for pain control. In some patients, this multi, multimodal treatment is so effective that patients don't need any opioid pain medications and opioid-free pain control is possible. It is important to know what to expect and what the risks are of the different medication options. Tylenol, for instance, is moderately effective for pain but is also the safest option with minimal side effects, although with overdose, it can cause liver damage. You can see from this slide that opioids, which are very strong pain medications, also have the most side effects, including after just a few days having an opposite effect and increasing a patient's sensitivity to pain, which can actually make their pain control more difficult. We're concerned about prescribing opioids in patients because we're in the midst of an opioid epidemic in the United States. South Carolina in particular has an increasing rate of opioid addiction. You can see from this slide that over the past 20 years, the amount of overdose deaths due to opioids and the opioid epidemic in general have worsened significantly. Prescription opioids can be a factor in opioid addiction and 5% of patients who are prescribed opioids after a year develop an addiction problem. 20% of people that are on opioids chronically started using them for acute pain such as after a surgery. And people that are addicted to prescription opioids are at risk to transition to dangerous street drugs such as heroin. Once you're discharged from the hospital, you should plan on continuing multimodal pain therapy. While you're in the hospital, please consider what your average pain score has been and discuss with your physician 
a plan for continuing your pain control as an outpatient. For instance, if your pain is very well controlled, you might want to consider being prescribed less opioid pain medications at discharge. And if your pain is as expected, then you may want to go home with the standard amount. If your pain is minimal, you may consider being opioid free. When you're at home, you should monitor your pain and your medication usage. If you anticipate running out of pain medications or having have problems controlling your pain, you should call your physician's office during regular business hours and expect a return call by the next business day. Many, if not most, patients have leftover opioid medications after surgery. These often end up in medicine cabinets where there are risk that they will end up being used by others, including children. You should dispose of these medications properly and not keep them long term. You can dispose of them at most police stations, some pharmacies, or at medication drop boxes at a Prisma State Hospital. This short presentation is meant to better inform you about what to expect for pain control after your surgery. You should plan on discussing further with your surgeon with regards to your specific needs and expectations after your surgery.